In this video, we're going to have a look at this product here. It's the Insta360 Go 2 USB power mount. So we're going to look very quickly at why it probably wasn't designed for use with FPV. And then we're going to look at how you can use it with FPV. And specifically, we're going to look at how you can connect it to your flight controller. Let's take a look at the product page first. So here's the product page here. It's called the Insta360 Go 2 USB power mount. Now, this is one that I purchased from their store, the Insta360 store. Unfortunately, I haven't actually seen them in any FPV shops uh, as yet, but hopefully they'll get there soon. So this is what the product looks like on the product page. Uh, now, these units, I actually purchased them with my own money. So, of course, Insta360 hasn't had any control over the content of this video. Okay, so let's have a look at what you get in the box. You actually get the mount itself, and you'll notice there's just the GoPro mount on the bottom here. There's no base plate or anything like that, and the USB lead. So, so it seems what they're, they're really thinking, thinking what Insta360 is thinking, thinking, is that you'll use some sort of tripod, and you'll have a GoPro mount on your tripod and mount it on there. Of course, you'll have your own bolt to attach it, and just power with USB. Uh, let's have a look at the manual. Here's the manual. If we zoom in a little bit, we see that they're talking about connecting it to a computer. So interestingly, they say you need a 2 amp power bank. So basically, you need 2 amps power supply. Uh, we'll come back and talk about that a bit later. If we go down here, they're talking about connecting it to a computer. And if we look for something relative to FPV, it's uh, down here, point 0.3. They say, when using with a drone, please do not use this accessory in extreme weather conditions. Okay, so I don't know what they're really thinking about there, but uh, that's what it says in the manual. For mounting it, of course, you're going to need a GoPro mount on the drone. You can see I've got one here, and that's actually this one here. And there's another one that I like to use. This one here is a TPU printed one. So if I squeeze it, I wonder if I can get a shot of that. If I squeeze it just a little bit, you can see it, it's got a bit of compression and giving it. So it can take a bit of jello out. This one's particularly good, you can just put a, a piece of double-sided tape on there, put that on top, and then through these holes you can just put a cable tie and tie it down. So somehow you're going to use some sort of GoPro mount. Now of course you don't want this big thing sticking out the side there, so I'll actually show you what I do to attach the camera to the GoPro mount. Now the standard GoPro mount uses a 5mm hole here, bolt, so this is an M5 bolt and even if you don't use this, even if you use some sort of M5 bolt and nut, it's still going to be quite heavy. So I'll show you what I like to use and it's basically an aluminium standoff and this one I've got some, some washers on M2 bolts and I'll give you a close up of how I actually attach this. Right, so the, the optimal length for this is about 15 to 18 millimeters for the, the alloy standoff. And you can see I've, I've screwed one screw in here, and it's not screwed in all the way, it's just a little bit loose. I've, I've used some lock thread on that, so it won't actually come out. Okay, so the mount goes on here. This goes through. Now I'm using, a, using an M2 type standoff. Uh, you can use an, an M3 standoff as well. Okay. And then, of course, the other, the other bolt, we can see it there, just goes straight in the other side. And we just screw that in until it's tight. And that'll actually, because it's 15 millimeters, it's a, a, bit, a bit narrower than the width of the GoPro mount. So it'll actually just tighten up there. And uh, that actually doesn't add too much weight to it at all. Once it's mounted, the Insta360 just goes straight in there. And they've got this little clip on the front here. And it just clips over a notch. <laughs> clips over a notch on the top there. Uh, I'm not actually saw, sure how secure that would be. I think I'd be inclined to put a bit of tape over there anyway. The next part is to connect it to your flight controller. Now, you might have an all-in-one board like this or a stack. But either way, you're going to have a 5 volt rail on your flight controller board. And the important thing to check is that that 5 volt rail on your flight controller board can actually supply 2 amps. And for that, we're going to have a look at the instruction manual. Here's one here. It's the Dito Mumba. 
So this is one of the flight controllers that I've got. And if we just have a look at the pinout diagram, and most flight controllers are going to come with the pinout diagram. And you'll, you'll get some information off there about the 5 volt rail. So for example, if we look here, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, if we come down here, we'll see that the BEC, the 5 volt, is rated for 2.5 amps. If I have a look at another one, uh, this one here, once again, we'll have a look at the pinout for that one. And let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, information over here. So here it is again. The 5 volt is actually 2 amps on this one. Right, so checking my flight controllers, I can see that I've got a, a 2 amp 5 volt rail on this one. And on the stack, I've actually got a 2.5 amp. Now, the important thing to remember is that you may be running other devices on that 5 volt rail as well. For example, a GPS and your receiver. Uh, I think the receiver should only pull about 100 milliamps, so there's no real problems there. Uh, and if you've got an older flight controller, definitely check your, your manual and your specifications because an older flight controller might not actually have a 2-amp 5-volt rail. So the next part is actually connected to the flight controller. Now you might think it's easy just to, to use a USB lead and you might think you could just maybe cut this off and of course in here there's four leads, you could choose the positive and negative and somehow route that down to the flight controller. But you can see the problem here, how far this thing sticks out. It's, it's over the top of the props, and I really don't know how you're going to connect that and tie it up and keep everything out of the way. In reality, we probably need to make a, a special lead, and what we actually need for that is one of these connectors here. So this is actually a USB-C connector. I wonder if I can get a close-up of this. So there it is there. And that's just the, the raw USB-C connector. Okay, so how do we get one of these things? The first way is just to go on uh, either eBay or go to your local e electronics shop. If you're buying on eBay, you need to search for 24-pin USB-C. And you'll get listings coming up like this. And you can see, let's have a look at this listing here. This is the part you need. And they've actually labeled uh, VBUS and ground here. Now, most of these sellers, unfortunately, are going to be in China. Uh, you'll be lucky if you find one that's not in China, so you might be waiting a while. So that's one option to get the connector. Uh, but the other option is to actually cut one yourself. And when I say cut one yourself, I mean actually just cut one out of a lead. So there's a couple of things you're going to need if you're going to do that. You'll need a, a brush with some good metal bristles in it. And another thing you'll need is a power, a soldering unit like this, a soldering station, and it's actually got a hot air blower. So this is going to, to melt the, the hot glue in here, and we're going to use the brush to scrape that glue back and clean it up and actually cut the, the unit out. So I'll have a quick look at the process of how you do that. Okay, so I'm just going to speed up this part of the video and explain what's happening here. So the first thing we do is need, we need to cut the plastic off the outside and underneath there we're going to find some metal plates that we need to remove to actually get to the connector. Now of course all these USB connectors are going to be constructed a little bit differently but basically there's going to be some hot glue that's holding all the components onto the, or actually holding the wires onto the, the circuit board and that needs to be heated up with the, the heat gun and it can, needs to be brushed back with the metal brush and once you've exposed the leads you can then cut them off uh, an important thing to do is actually make a note of where positive and negative are so I'll make a little note on a, a piece of paper about that and then we just clean the rest of the hot glue off unsolder the, the leads off the connector and just clean up the pads a bit All right, so once we've done that, we can just refer to our diagram here and we'll just tin the positive and negative terminals and solder our wire on. Okay, so I'm actually using uh, 28 AWG wire here. Sorry, actually, I think it's 26. 26 AWG wire. This is silicon wire. So I'll just tin the connectors there. Okay, referring to our diagram, we've got positive over this side.
and negative on the other side. Now I'm wiring the wires so they come straight out the back of the connector like, like it was originally. Uh, you might want to actually reverse it and take the wires the other way to keep them out of the way. I might just show you both options. A little bit of heat shrink. Over the top there and that will keep everything in place. Okay, and there we have it, and that can just be plugged straight into there. Okay, so you can see in this example, well, we're still, we've still got the leads coming out the side. Well, you can see in this example, we've got our adapter there, and if I plug it in here, we've still got the leads coming out the side, but at least it's going to be easier to fold them back over the, the unit. In fact, you might want to fold them back and put another piece of heat shrink over there, or we might actually want to solve them the opposite direction so the leads are actually coming out this way. Okay, and here's one that we've actually soldered the reverse direction. The leads are actually coming out uh, in the same way the connector is. So this one's actually going to keep the leads tucked in. And if we just have a look at that, we'll plug it in here. Okay, and you can see there the, uh, the leads actually come tight up against the case and keeps it all nice and neat. Here it is all mounted up and this is a good solution. You might even want to put a cable tie around here to actually tie those leads to the, the GoPro mount on the, the drone there. But it does leave one, one problem. Now if you just disconnect this, just so you take the, the camera off, you're then left with this lead flopping around and the question is what do you actually do with that? Do you actually tie it down? Do you tape it down onto the frame? So there, there might be another way that you can wire it up that will actually negate that problem, and we'll have a look at that. So here's the second way of wiring up. You can see this time I've actually got a connector. It's going to be an inline connector, and if we have a look at the frame, you can see I've got the connector here, and it's, it's actually short, a very short lead, so it's not going to flop around and move. So in this way, you can actually Put the mount on here and those connectors just go together. We'll just connect them up. Okay, so this way you can actually remove the Insta360 from the drone and disconnect this and this connector here is not going to move so much at all. Okay, so that's uh, another possible way of connecting it up. And that way you can actually just uh, take it off and not have to worry about this thing flopping around and getting into the props. So I hope this video has helped with some ideas about how you can connect your USB power mount and how you can get power to it. And as always, if you like this content, like and subscribe, and happy flying.